Welcome sa ating CLJ Notes Channel. Dito, ina-upload natin ang ating notes on criminal law and jurisprudence. Ngayon, i-upload natin ang ating notes on crimes against persons, specifically the crime of rape as provided for by RAA 353, which took effect on October 22, 1997. Muli, ang crimes against persons ay parricide, death or physical injuries inflicted under exceptional circumstances, murder, homicide, death caused in a tumultuous affray, physical injuries inflicted in tumultuous affray, giving assistance to suicide, discharge of firearms, infanticide, intentional abortion, unintentional abortion. Abortion practiced by the woman herself or her parents, abortion practiced by a physician or a midwife and dispensing of abortives, ito yung pagbiprescribe ng pampalaglag, no? duel, challenging to duel, mutilation, serious physical injuries, administering injurious substances or beverages, less serious physical injuries, slight physical injuries, and maltreatment and rape. So, yung Article 266-A, 2D, yun ang titingnan natin sa notes natin ngayon. Elements of rape under Article 266-A, Paragraph 1. That the offender is a man. That the offender had carnal knowledge of a woman. So, ang offender dito ay lalaki. Nagkaroon siya ng sexual intercourse sa isang babae. That such sexual intercourse is accomplished under any of the following circumstances. So, yung carnal knowledge or ang sexual intercourse na yan o yung pagtatalik na yan ay by using force or intimidation. Gumamit ng dahas o pananakot. When the woman is deprived of reason or otherwise unconscious, walang malay ang babae or unconscious. By means of fraudulent machination or grave abuse of authority, ginamita ng panilin lang o pag-abuso sa kapangyarihan. And when the woman is under 12 years of age or demented. So, below 12 years old ang edad ng babae or merong kapansanan sa pag-iisip. Iyan yung tinatawag nating statutory rape. The elements of rape naman under section uh, under Article 266-A section uh, paragraph 2 ito naman yung mga elements that the offender commits an act of sexual offender so yung offender dito may be male or female lalaki o babae and then act of sexual assault that the act of sexual assault is committed by any of the following means so ang sexual assault ay sa pamamagitan ng by inserting his penis into another person's mouth or anal orifice, so sa bunganga or sa puwetan, or by inserting any instrument or object into the genital or anal orifice of another person, so gumamit ng instrument or object para maipasok doon sa either genital or anal orifice of another person. That the act of sexual assault is accomplished under any of the following circumstances. So, yung pag-assault na ito ay ginamita ng force or intimidation or deprive of reason or otherwise unconscious, maaring din rag, by means of fraudulent machination or grave abuse of authority when the woman is under 12 years of age or demented. So, ito yung statutory rape. Kahit na may consent, basta below 12 years old, that will be rape under the law. Okay, so ito ang tinatawag nating sexual assault. Hindi na siya uh, naglilimit sa crime ng rape doon lang sa kalalakihan. No? Kasi sa paragraph 2, kasama na ang sexual assault. So, sa paragraph 1, yun yung traditional rape na sinasabi natin. Who can commit rape? So under RAA 353, the crime of rape can now be committed by a male or female. So pwedeng babae or babae, baba, lalaki o babae ang makasuhan. Before its amendment, rape could only be committed by a male person. So hindi lang lalaki ngayon ang pwedeng makasuhan ng rape. Two modes of committing rape, organ rape, penile rape, penile from the word penis, or rape through sexual intercourse. So, yun yung unang classification or mode. Pangalawa, instrument or object rape or gender-free rape. So, rape by sexual assault. So, instrument or object rape siya kasi maaaring gumamit ng object na ipinasok sa okay, genitalia or sa anal orifice. Or gender-free rape kasi kahit na babae or uh, LGBT member pwedeng mag-commit ng rape na ito. 
So, yun na tinatawag nating rape by sexual assault. Character of offended woman is immaterial in rape. Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin na, eh, ano naman yan, malandi naman yan, kaya na-rape buti nga sa kanya. That cannot be the excuse for committing any forcible sex with a woman. Meron tayong tinatawag na rape shield rule. Ito yung, in prosecutions for rape, evidence of complainants past sexual conduct, opinion thereof, or of his or her reputation shall not be admitted unless and only to the extent that the court finds that such evidence is material and relevant to the case. Kung hindi naman material and relevant to the case, ang kanyang previous sexual conduct or reputation, okay, mag come into play yung tinatawag natin na rape shield rule. Marital rape, ito naman yung pagkakataon kung saan yung kahit na asawa ay pwedeng makasuhan na rape. So, marital rape or spousal rape is the act of sexual intercourse with one's spouse without the spouse's consent. The lack of consent is the essential element and need not involve physical violence. Marital rape is considered a form of domestic violence and sexual abuse. Although historically, sexual intercourse with marriage within marriage was regarded as a right of spouses, engaging in the act without the spouse's consent is now widely classified as rape by many societies around the world, repudiated by international conventions, and increasingly criminalized. So, sa atin, sa revised penal code as amended by RA 8353, yung marital rape ay crime na rin. Okay, so yun ang mahalagang puntos about the crime of rape still within our topic on crimes against persons. Patuloy na mag-aral ng maigi, magsikap para sa matagumpay na kinabukasan. God bless everyone.